Just waiting for the bus. Oh, yeah. Man, you keep talking yeah. funny shit about my fucking kick. And you annoying me and aggravating me. And I'm trying to enjoy my life. Roll us on your wrist for playing giant. Standing at the bus stop, sucking on a lollipop. Once she gets pumping, it's hard to make the hottie stop. Hottie stop, stop, stop. You ready? All right, now. <laughs> this will be a crazy ride. I'm warning you now. The following video is broadcasting live, and thank you for being my studio audience. Thank you for hitting thumbs up and subscribing to my channel for more black news, celebrity entertainment, and a splash of controversy. What up and welcome back. It's your girl Jane, the plainest Jane. And look, we got some syrup to get into. A lot of y'all have been begging me for that intro again. Y'all like the lady standing on the bus stop sucking on a lollipop. So I'm like, you know what? Let me go ahead and give my people these things. Look. Y'all know things are always sticky in Hollywood in real life. Happy 1.35 a.m. At least it's 1.35 a.m. over here in Baltimore. Baltimore, stand up. Maryland, stand up. <sighs> I was somehow <laughs> able to bribe my co-host into working a little bit of overtime today. Leo, are you happy with the overtime that's being worked? You you happy? You it's a, That's what you want? Okay. Look, we got to go ahead and feed because we don't want nobody calling Peter, right? We can't just, like, not compensate the co-host because he's, he's going, ah, whoa, 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 you shutting things off. Wait a minute. Leo, get off of. All right. Here. God damn. You guys, my screen's cut off and it scared me. My screens, I said, yo, he pushed buttons in the damn, I thought I was going to have to restart the live. Okay, one more tree. I shouldn't be rewarding you for, um. okay, sit, get back. You're going to get it in a second. Okay, you get half up front, the other half. This is over, this is a little overtime. Okay, this is time and a half because he was, <laughs> you see, he just tried to snatch it out my hand. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, you just finished working a this is not gonna work. You just because he just finished working a shift, right? So all right, all right, that's it, buddy. That's it. You are embarrassing. All right, can you get down? You do knock things over. I gotta reset. Can you that's it? I promise. That's it. Can you get down? Don't make me get stern on you in front of these people. Where's the mouse? You knocked the mouse down. Leo, get down. Leo, get down. Get down. I do this for y'all. I deal with this because y'all like it. You know, I get more people in the comments telling me how they love him than they love me. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, well, we might as well have him clock in. Okay? God damn. Oh. I mean, just like, what the hell? We get back to the regularly scheduled program. I mean, he, I literally woke him up for this. I ain't gonna lie. That's why I felt bad because, like, I, I walked downstairs. I went to go wake him up and he said, huh? And his tongue was still hanging out his mouth. Yeah. What? He got a certain way that he says what to me when I call him. And his tongue was still literally hanging out. <laughs> I'm like, damn, you sleep, sleep. Wake up. It's time to work. <laughs> <laughs> they said give Leo a chicken box at this point. We got we bought chicken the day before yesterday. We going to fry it tomorrow because we still got the crab cakes and chili for the night. <sighs> let, let, let me bring it back together because he didn't he did threw the... It's it. That's it. It's nothing else for you, buddy. It's not. You got to get out the way. It's not about you. I'm going to just act like you're not here. Right? We got to get to the intro. Four, five minutes in, we not to the, to, 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 to the intro yet. Listen, everybody, come in. Hit thumbs up on the bus. You know, the cat throws things off, but y'all like it. Y'all love it. Cats are adorable. I can't lie. But they are also very sassy and it's gotta be they way like it 
Leo. Get down. Get down. It's not a thank you because it's not a question. He's very sassy, moody, nasty. At least say hi. Say hi to the people. Say hello. All right. We good. We're done with the co-host. I'm sorry. He's holding it up. We got to get this thing going. We've got several topics to get through. It's 1.39 in the morning. I still have to be to work between 8.30 and 9 a.m. Depending on the way I want to flex my time tomorrow. And we're going to have to get through this. So look, 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 look. Come on in. If you ain't going to hit thumbs up for me, hit thumbs up for the cat guy, dang it. Okay? Hit thumbs up for the co-host, Leo. Always try me. Today, in this video, we're going to be getting into Nicki Minaj's assistant. We're going to get to the bottom of this narrative, okay? This, 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 this narrative, the assistant is speaking out on Instagram via the stories, exposing all types of things. The baby's name, the baby's name may have been exposed. Allegedly, this assistant is exposing the baby's name. We're also going to get into Beyonce removing the lyric from her album, right? Changing around the lyrics to remove them. We remember when Lizzo did that not too long ago, right? Very similar situations. Apparently, Beyonce had a situation where there was some uh, uh, an offensive terminology, an offensive, some would even call it a slur, on the album. We're going to talk about that. And I really want to know how y'all feel about this as well, even though I touched on it before a little bit when we talked about Lizzo. We're going to talk about also this trend of mistreating young Black children at public parks, right? Parks that are geared towards, catered directly towards children, these character-based parks where all these children really want is to um, enjoy the place, the environment. And if, if, if the character comes in, in a proximity around them, they just want to be at least acknowledged, right? We, we've seen Sesame Place, Lego Place, this, that, and the third, you name it. It seems to be a trend. Unfortunately, we're going to get into that. Wendy Williams is still not okay. Some of you may have seen the clip today of her in the car with the window. There's another one of her literally sleep in public on something that she's not even supposed to be sleep on. It's not okay. I'm not sure what's going on with this podcast, if we ever going to get it. Um, I tend to lean towards agreeing with Funky Deneva. You'd be a fool to think that we're really going to get this podcast and that it's really going to be popping because Wendy still doesn't really seem to be all the way there. I also want to talk about Deshaun Watson. Obviously, y'all see him in the title. And then I also want to talk a smidge about the Biden administration and so much more, so much more. Biden administration is actually being sued for something. And y'all know I talk about issues under the flag over here on this channel. So if you know, you know. If you don't, you don't. There's a lot of other stuff we want to get into. This is the Black News Bus. Y'all already know what time it is, okay? So if you haven't already taken a moment to drop a pancake in the chat, listen, it's free, right? Whether you're on the bus or you're chasing the bus, which, chasing the bus, which means you're catching the replay, right? Or just hit thumbs up on the video, okay? Regardless of how you're watching it. On the bus, chasing the bus, hit thumbs up because that's free. Feel free to donate to the cash chat, Okay? And also, shout out to everybody in the live chat. Now, listen, let's get ready for takeoff, shall we? The plane is Jane. This is one of my favorite comments here. She says, I loves me some black. And she said, loves me some <laughs> black news. She says, is it just me? Or does anyone else get tired of seeing people that don't look like them delivering info about them day in and day out? All right, and welcome back. Now we got the cash app on the screen. I literally just got off of the lead attorney's panel as he was talking about the flashy pastor, a.k.a. Bishop Bling Bling, a.k.a. the scamming pastor, a.k.a. Bishop Lamar White, whatever you want to call him, right? The New York pastor bishop that got robbed on live stream. I just left um, the lead attorney's panel and that was pretty cool and pretty dope. So I had to change my name. So there's the accurate cash app right there. If you want to donate, it's not required, right? It's free to donate um, with a simple thumbs up. If you aren't able to support via cash app or via super chat, okay? So let's get into the Black News Bus. It's time for takeoff. If you don't already know the Black News Bus, it's a social media stroll that covers Black topics inside of the celebrity world, but it also covers real Black news and everyday people and topics 
like me and you, okay? And you know, we also got some nuggets of black excellence and black history, okay? So before we take off on the black news bus, make sure you've already handled your own spiritual warfare, mental health. I touch on it in the beginning of every video. If you're not feeling all right, if things in your world literally are just absolutely not okay, check it on yourself first before you spend time dibbling and dabbling in these celebrity businesses, okay? And shout out to the new subscribers that I have. I just want to say thank you. And of course, before I get into breaking down today's topics and viral events, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already subscribed to the channel because it's free, right? And thumbs up or down. Listen, honestly, either way, I appreciate it. Especially if you like hit the thumbs down button like really hard because you're really upset because you really disagree. Thank you for the engagement. I appreciate that. Don't forget to think critically and independently regardless of what you hear from me or anybody else, okay? Somebody in the last stream said, I like your shirt. Shout out to your shirt or something about the 90s. Yes. Nintendo 64, 007, okay, Golden Eye. These, these were the vibes back in the 90s. So, yeah, shout out to my shirt. I love it. It's from Target. It was on clearance for six bucks. But let's move on. Here's one of the first things I want to get into. As you continue to hit the thumbs up button, okay, let's go ahead and get started. I want to first of all say shout out to my girl. I don't know if any of you all watch Albert elementary right but i want to shout this woman out right here because when i tell you she really came from a place where she used social media in a way to make everyone laugh um a lot of times when you're making people laugh on social media especially when she did it it's free now instagram and facebook pays but it wasn't always like that so if you watch albert elementary you already know who this is right quinta quinta Brunson, right? Black excellence and black girl magic all wrapped up into one. She has been named as the new face of Olay, which would make this the actress's first ever beauty partnership. If you don't necessarily know who she is, or if you feel like she looks familiar, even outside the show, that was a skit years ago. I, I, I don't know. I want to say maybe, I don't know, maybe like five years ago where there was a skit where she was at the movies like on a date with the guy and he was ordering stuff he ordered like a large popcorn and a large soda and she was like a large a large oh he got money get it all for him this is her she literally went from making skits on vine instagramish to literally creating her own series about underprivileged and underfunded schools in Philly, I believe, based off of her own experiences where she grew up. So shout out to her. She is now being nominated for different awards and everything like that. And I wanted to shout out her and start the show out on a foot of Black excellence. So shout out to her. She is hilarious. She is excellent. It's, it, it's the Black girl magic for me. So shout out to her. It just, it really warmed my heart and made me all warm and fuzzy inside this morning when I woke up and saw that she had an Olay partnership. Now, and I use a lot of Olay products, like a lot. <laughs> like I'm, I gear towards Olay and Noxima when it comes to face care. I like Olay for moisturizers and I pretty much only use Noxema on my face, but that's a whole nother thing, right? Because some people ask me about what I use on my skin because they feel like I have good skin. And for the people who want to know, I really just use Noxema, a toner, and Olay moisturizers. But anyway, shout out to her. Um, this is not, you know, there's some skincare products that really only appeal to people who aren't black. Like Clean and Clear and Neutrogena. And like that shit is not for our skin. It dries your skin out. Our skin doesn't do well with that. Like when, when let, me, let me just give you a quick skincare tip in 60 seconds. Anything that is drying your skin out and making your skin feel super tight outside of a face mask that you're doing maybe once a week or however often you exfoliate and you shouldn't be doing clay masks very often. If it dries your skin out and makes your skin feel really tight, it means it's taking all, it's stripping your skin out of all of its oils. That's not good for your skin. Even if you feel like you have oily skin, right? Because 
what that does is it puts your skin in overproduction mode. Your skin begins to panic because everyone's skin needs a bit of moisture and a bit of oil in order to survive and sustain itself. So when you are using things, whether it be straight alcohol or witch hazel or whatever, and it's making your skin feel really tight, that's not a good thing. Unless it's, of course, one of those clay masks and you're doing it every once a week or every two weeks or whatever. So I like Olay because it's not one of those products that are geared towards people who don't have oily skin. And I'm sorry, a lot of people of color, we a lot of black folk have oily skin. And sometimes we feel like the remedy because we get so sick of our oily skin and we feel like the oily skin is too much. We try to take it all out of it. No bueno, your skin is only going to produce it double time. But anyway, right? That's just what I wanted to say, okay? <laughs> I know I went back to my makeup days because when I started my channel, I was a makeup channel when I first started. So I'm very hip on skincare and makeup and all that stuff. But that's just like not my main interest, my primary interest anymore. So anyway, let's let's move on, okay? I, I just wanted to throw a couple, couple skincare tips. And if y'all like them skincare tips, let me know. I might give y'all more. We might do a backstage or whatever the case is or on the backup channel, but that's not my primary focus on the channel now anymore, okay? So shout out to Quinta Brunson. I'm so happy for her and kudos, all right? <sighs> all right, so if there are any of you all who seen my last video, right? My last video, I'm doing two lives back to back this evening. And I'm doing these two lives back to back. If you've seen my last video, um, put a one in the chat for me, please. If you've seen the last video. The last video what was about, should I tell you or should I do a cash app giveaway? What was my last video about, y'all? First person to put what the last video was about, I'll send you $5 on cash app. Let's, let's just go ahead and do that. And I'm going to just give you a brief synopsis and keep it pushing, okay, because um, I think it, it's a good segue because I'm not, that was a, a, a very detailed video. And honestly, if, if you're the person who's putting it in the chat, you have to be somebody that I've seen in that chat as well, not somebody that just went back and looked at the answer, okay? Let's see who's here. Okay, nope, not the lying pastor. I see somebody got it right, but I didn't see them in the chat. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I ain't see some of y'all in the chat. Okay. Okay, so some people do want to still see the skincare videos. But some of the people I'm seeing commenting the right answer, I didn't see them. I ain't see them in the chat. I didn't see them in the chat. I didn't see any of you guys in the chat in the last video. If you were in the chat and I'm mistaken, if you DM me on Instagram, send me a screenshot. The live chat replay is up on the last video. Screenshot you being in that chat and this chat. And we good to go from there. Other than that, it seemed like some of you just maybe looked down and literally looked at what the last video was. Y'all ain't remember it. <laughs> but that's okay. Let me just go ahead and give y'all a summary. And shout out to all 120 of us who are here literally eight minutes to tip, okay? Miss Rockstar, I did see you in the last chat. I saw you in the last comment section. I just saw one of your comments. Um, Just Jay was there, but she didn't put it. She saw Dar You saw Doris, Jay? Doris was in the last show. You know what, Doris? You were there, but did Doris put the right answer? Because Doris did join the... um. Doris joined the membership again. But at first, Doris put the line past her. Then she put Mr. Corbress. Okay, Doris. Doris, do me a favor. You, I know you follow me on Twitter. So dm me your cash app tag and i'll send you the five dollars okay thank you so much for participating i appreciate that um and so look amy you didn't miss much of anything thank you for coming in so look th th this is just what i want to say and this is going to segue us into the next subject because i want to get into deshaun watson right um the 
last thing that we spoke about, it was mystical, right? Mystical was just a nasty ass creep, right? He was arrested in book for alleged aggregated, um, aggravated. Those words literally only have one letter difference. And that's why I get them so I don't use aggravated on a daily basis, but I pretty much use aggregated on a daily basis. So I get those words confused. But mystical, right, was arrested in book for alleged aggravated assault sex crimes. Again, right? He was taken in Sunday, booked on several serious charges, including false imprisonment, first degree, great, um, strangulation and more, right? This is Mystical's third time being arrested for aggravated sex crimes in the past two decades. And as of Monday afternoon, no bond had been posted for Mystical following the arrest. So in the video, in the last video that you need to check out if you want all of the details, okay? Um, we get into the full list of charges, the details on the horrific situation, the events leading up to the incident, and his full arrest history, okay? It's a lot. When I tell you R. Kelly's not the only person who videotapes his sex crimes, I mean that, okay? Third time in two decades, just crazy. Crazy, 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 crazy. Right. But speaking of sexual deviancy and sex crimes, since I'm, I'm not going to get into those details because we already went over that in a video. Right. I want to get into this Deshaun Watson. Now, how do y'all feel? Because a lot of us heard today that Deshaun Watson was suspended. He was suspended for six games for <laughs> sexual. Not sexual. Right going against the code of conduct of the NFL. And he was only, right, only suspended for six games. Do you feel like that's fair or not? Do you, in my opinion, before I give my opinion, right, the NFL has no morals. They just don't. They don't have any morals. But they never have. I've noticed that during the Ray Rice time, right? So here's this information. Here's this 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 screenshot. Deshaun Watson facing his 23rd lawsuit after a woman watches HBO's Real Sports interviews. Literally over two dozen women came forward. Okay. I call him the booty warrior. I did a whole video about him called the booty warrior. Right. Because he was asking women. He was bringing his own towels and NDAs to get massages. And then... Uh, when somebody's bringing their own towels, that means they're trying to hide something, right? That means they might ejaculate and want to take the towel with them rather than somebody being able to keep the towel so that the towel can be tested for, you know, DNA, sperm, blah, 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 blah. And so he's bringing his own towels. He's forcing his, um, forcing the Mersu to sign NDA agreements. Put a one in the chat if you feel like it's not fair and put a two in the chat if you feel like six games a six game suspension is um is what's deserved it's like it's okay like that's what it is let me know two dozen women two dozen women these sexual misconduct allegations come from two dozen women amy said he's a sick negro okay let's let's <laughs> roll the clip this is a sick negro He's a sick Negro. Again, we discuss all the time. We talk about sexual deviancy. We talk about pedophiles. We talk about just these, these, these people and these things that they do. And when they have money, they have access. And when they're not ugly, this may not be the best picture, but I've seen plenty of pictures of him and he's not a flavor flavor looking guy, but it's not about the way that they look or them being able to really book women who consent to these things. It's about money. It's about power. It's about control. That's that's what it's about. I find it to be really unfair, though. I really do. I find it to be really unfair. Crystal Edwards says, too, she feels like it's fair. Okay. Um, I don't feel like it's fair, right? Leo, you feel like it's fair? Because you right here in my face like you know what I'm talking about. Why are you in grown folks' business? Here. 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 All right, that's it. Come on. Overdose. It's late at night. These are treats. It's like candy. Get down. It's like candy. Get down. Get down, buddy. Buddy, this is it. Buddy.
Here's what I don't find fair about it, right? I just feel like it's not fair. He's suspended for six games for violating the NFL's personal conduct policies. And that's not even six months. There were two dozen women. That's not even a month per woman, right? Not that that should be the equivalent. You get down. What's going on? What's going on? Go, go this way. Here's one thing. I'm talking to my homeboy about this earlier today, right? And I'm like, yo, Calvin Ridley literally got suspended for an entire year for gambling. 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 A whole season, right? But when it comes to victims of alleged sexual assault, the NFL is, is just like mums the word about it. But my homeboy was telling me earlier today that it depends on the position that they play and their skill set. And I'm like, what? Because I, I brought up Mike Vick. I'm like, well, how come Mike Vick got all this scrutiny and da-da-da, jail time? And Deshaun Watkins gets suspended for six games. He saw oh, you comparing two different – I think I don't, I don't. think he said, like, you comparing a quarter – a quarterback and a linebacker, I don't know. I'm not a football type of gal, right? But I'm like, yo, the NFL has no moral compass, okay? None. None. And they're like, oh, you can't just find another quarterback that's as talented as him. I'm like, you know, Ray Rice played a really good position. Ray Rice was very vital and imperative to the Ravens' Baltimore stand-up. Um... And when he got in trouble for what he got in trouble for, it was mom's word. It, it, it just seems to be really slanted and really unfair. But, you know, the NFL doesn't have a moral compass. They don't care about victims. And, you know, when you mess with them dogs, not to say black people don't like dogs, but we know that some, you know, some people, they, they, they do find dogs to be more important, the, the rights and the comfort and the safety of dogs to be more important than people. They do. <laughs> like, they do. So how the hell does he get six months with two dozen victims, right? And I get it. Like, some people, oh, them women just want to cash grab. And some of the women from the R. Kelly situation might have wanted the cash grab too. However, the truth behind 60 to 70% of them victims, it's there, baby. It, it, it's not deniable. You clearly have a kryptonite, which makes it easy to observe that from a distance. So it makes it easy for people to prey upon you, your weakness, your kryptonite, what you, what type of deviancy are you so enthralled by that I can get in line and set you up and make it look and seem like, right? Or, 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 or trick you into what, whatever the case is. You did it though. This is illegal. You shouldn't be doing this. Deshaun Watkins is sitting up there getting massages, telling women to stick their finger in his booty. Like, what in the booty warrior is going on here? What's going on? I find it to be crazy. I find it to be crazy. Oh my goodness, Fio, I didn't. You got attacked by a dog at Amazon, nothing happened. Oh my goodness, no. Leo, you're doing too much. Please get down. Y'all, this cat, get down. Leo. Get down. Get down. You need to get down. So, yeah, I just don't think it's fair. I just don't think it's fair. I just don't think it's fair. Okay? I just don't. Six months because he didn't prey upon their own. Mike Vick got more time and punishment behind his dogs. That's that's what I'm saying. And so the NFL is just like, you know, I ain't going to lie. Earlier today, I'm tweeting and I wanted to tweet, abolish the NFL. You know what? I think I did tweet that in a reply, but I'm not like about to go hard with it, right? Abolish the police. Abolish this. Abolish that, right? 
And I'm like, abolish the NFL. It's like these niggas need something to keep them entertained, right? We talk about entertainment, Sundays, whatever day it is. But that shouldn't even be an excuse to not abolish something that's so harmful and detrimental to victims of sexual misconduct. It shouldn't be. I would be a fool to think that the NFL is all of a sudden about to prioritize victims over their bottom line and their profits and their margins and the players who mean more to them than ethics. I'd be a fool. And so, yeah, it's kind of bothersome. It's kind of bothersome seeing things like that, but it's, what are we going to do? The NFL is going to be the NFL. They're not going to change. I don't think. It'd be nice to see somebody start an initiative that might make a difference, but, you know, some of the people in the NFL are literally, and, and especially when it comes to ownership, the teams, the franchise, whatever, not the players. No, I'm not talking about the players, right? <laughs> Because the NFL and these sports are very similar to slavery. You you notice who excels the most in football and basketball. It's us. We're athletic as hell. We're talented as hell. Who what what are the color of most of the owners, the team owners, the franchise owners? Most of them ain't our color. And the way that they measure and size your body up in the middle of the field, it's definitely given slavery. It's definitely given slavery, but will it change and will it change anytime soon? I really don't think so. I really don't think so. So it would be nice to see something change, but I doubt it will. Those people who own the, they're some of the richest people in the world. The people who have ownership in the NFL and these teams. Okay. Fiora said, I'm going to say something. It won't be popular. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised either. I'm not surprised. I mean, the way that they covered up the Ray Rice situation, does anybody remember exactly how the Ray Rice thing unfolded? They had the whole tape. They tried to do a little sit him down on a bench for a minute when only a little bit of the tape came out. And then when they realized somebody else had ownership of the tape and it came out, then they took action against Ray Rice. But they had already knew Ray Rice's transgressions. They had already seen the full extent of the, the, the videotape of him sucker punching his wife and punching her until she's unconscious. Literally two-pieced her. You know how boxers' fists are literally, um, and, and, and those fighters and Floyd Mayweather and all of them, their fists are, are legitimately registered weapons? You talk about these football players who are out on the field all the time exercising and all that. Their, their body, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's a completely unfair advantage. It's an unfair advantage. So I'm not expecting the NFL to change them on. It's not, it doesn't mean that I'm complicit. It's just that will white people calling us niggas go away tomorrow? No, it won't. And that's not me being pessimistic. That's me being realistic about the situation. I'm not about to wake up like tomorrow's Christmas and and, and and I can say something or anybody could make a singular statement to get the NFL racism, oppression, oppression or anything to cease. So I say all that to say to wrap this up about Deshaun. Um, Booty Warrior Watkins. This punishment is bullshit. It's bullshit. And, and I don't know if any of Michael Vick's friends or, uh, you know, are still in the NFL, but who's really going to, you saw how Kaepernick got treated and what the hell did he do? What did he do? Outside of exercise his rights, nothing violent, but he could never work again in the NFL. But here this guy is doing what he's doing. And gets a little, it, it would have been nice if Kaepernick would have just got six games off. That would have been, not to say it, six games off, right? As opposed to losing your job in its entirety. It's rigged. The game is rigged. Y'all said Leo cracking y'all up. Because what do he want? What you want? Are you not embarrassed? <laughs> you should you are never embarrassed. You should be embarrassed. Um so yeah, Troll Farm Buggy says, um, 
Law, good thing he did a little bit of J-Time. Ray ruined his career over his temper. That's true. But, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'll just leave it there. I'm going to tell you all, just like this young NFL owners, they don't care what Deshaun really did because if they did, he wouldn't be playing football no more. Don't understand. Exactly. Exactly. I agree. Troll Farm Buggy, get out of here. And I can't wait to see Watson on the field. Let's get into Beyonce. Let's get into the next subject, right? Move it along swiftly and professionally, okay? As Justin J. King of Reeds would say, right? Um, Khalees is still going, child. When we talk about Beyonce, there's a couple things we need to talk about. Number one, number one, Solange unfollowed. We know Solange is Beyonce's sister. Solange unfollowed Khalees on Instagram. We know when it comes to social currency and things of that nature, that's a really big deal for celebrities. It's, it's even a pretty big deal for us regular people, believe it or not. I've been followed a couple people and hurt their fucking feelings and just did it in the middle of the night. And they were really offended by it, let alone celebrities with status and influence and all these other things. We know that Khalees has been going hard after Beyonce over the whole debacle of the album, the credits, Pharrell. And 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 his ensemble, right? Um, the Neptunes giving her a, a, a bad deal, a deal that she feels like is just not fair. And she felt like Khalees felt like, listen, I know you, Beyonce. I was worth at least a courtesy call. If you was going to use my music that I don't have the copyrights to, I don't have the masters to. Um, if you 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 owed me that, right? Khalees is still going off, child. This was this was a week ago, but like, look. look I'm I'm just mentioning it because I'm like, girl, give it up. But at the same time, honestly, if 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 do what you do, capitalism is capitalism. Everybody's gonna capitalize. We live in a capitalist society. So if you're riding a wave of coming at Beyonce, because I think Khalees's angle was different than an Azalea Banks angle, right? Azalea Banks is a certified troll. She's a certified troll and she just likes firing off at people for the sake of attention because she's got issues. Um, Khalees actually has a reason to feel this way. And honestly, you can never tell a victim when to stop feeling um, a certain type of way. Like, who are you to tell a victim of something, right? And Khalees is the victim in her own right. Who are we to tell her when to shut the hell up about it? I know my, my gut instinct is girls sit down. And, and if you follow me on Twitter, you already know my sentiments. But there's two sides to that. I even got to play devil's advocate to my gut instinct. Um, okay, if you want to go off because you feel like Beyonce did you wrong, you know it's bringing Khalees relevancy. It's it's increasing some of her stream, her streaming numbers, her revenue right now, her visibility, right? Her relevancy. She's got this uh, cooking page, cooking situation. So there are a lot more eyes on Khalees than there were 10 days ago. So she feels like she was cheated out of something. She feels like she was cheated out of a lot. So of course she's going to extract as much as possible from this situation with Beyonce. I do feel like some of her anger should be directed towards um, nah, uh, nah, Lord have mercy. Pharrell in them, however, you know, when you're when 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 you're scorned and when you feel screwed over as a woman, can't nobody tell you where to direct that. And again, her thing is I knew Beyonce so on and so forth. This is the reason why I kind of feel like girls sit down, because now she gets into the Rihanna insinuation where she feels like she's insinuating that Rihanna stole her, stole her, stole her style, stole her wave. Here's the receipt of that, if you haven't seen it. If you follow me on Twitter, you've already seen this, right? And shout out to all my Twitter followers. So uh, someone says, I feel like Rihanna wrote a wave created by Khalees. Khalees says, let's not open Pandora's box. Not today, one step at a time, friend, right? So it's like, okay, girl, you're going to have to Beyonce. You're going to have to Rihanna. You're going to have to... Uh, all right, girl, next case. Because... <laughs> Girl, we talk. It's not like you're saying anything different day to day, but hey, you know, say it as loud as you can. I ain't gonna tell you to stop. But girl, I got a heavy eye roll here for you to to be keeping going, 
right? But let's get into this Beyonce information, right? When we talk about Beyonce, she is currently removing a slur and she's put out information through her publicist about this slur that she is removing, right? A, a, a lyric. She's changing the lyrics in her album, the Renaissance album. I can be honest, I have never seen. And I grew up on Beyonce. I grew up on Destiny's Child. Da, 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 da. I was here for literally the first album. Some writings on the wall, Survivor, all that other stuff there's been a lot of bad press surrounding this album. And with this album here, we have Beyonce reworking a song, a song that, that was co-written by Drake. It's called Heated. And it has apparently an ableist slur in it. The ableist slur is spaz. Okay? The ableist slur is spaz. There are 150 of us right now and only 87 likes, Right? It's like half the number of likes is viewers. Please do me a favor. It's free to hit thumbs up. I hit that button. Donate for free. Okay. Hey, thanks for it's letting me keep you connected and in the know with what's happening in the black world. Don't forget to smash on that like button for support and for more black news. So thank you so much, Troll Farm Buggy, for the five dollar super chat. It says Mr. NDA not going to jail. So by the NFL standards, he's good. Production versus tolerance. Mm, mm. Troll Farm Buggy, we can agree to disagree on that one. Of course, he's not going to jail. We know that. Mm. And, and it's unfortunate and it's cruddy. Um, but nonetheless, look, we 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 literally went over this exact situation with Lizzo, right? Remember when Lizzo had the word spaz in her song? And people from the UK, because that's where it's a slur. It's not a slur here in the United States. People find that word to be offensive in the UK. And they find that word to be ableist because they say that, according to UK terminology, um, it refers to someone who is spastic, who was born with a disability, which makes it difficult for them to control their muscles, especially their arms and legs. And most people now refer to someone with this disability as having cerebral palsy, right? And there's just been so much pushback about this. Um, and it's, it's essentially, I find it really interesting when the UK tries to police and control United States or American language because you're not even here, right? And there's also AAVE, African American Vernacular English, where we use that word as a term that literally means go crazy, right? And there's always this debate, which one came first, which one came first? And for the UK to be trying to police American or United States language, people in the UK literally call cigarettes fags. You see how Leo had to get up and walk away? Because it's too much for him too. He even knows it's wrong. So, and, and, and anytime you bring that up, to them as they're sitting writing you these dissertations about just don't use it and blah 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 and we well how well how come you call cigarettes that because that's a slur towards the lgbt community how come you call, how about you change your language up there in uk crickets 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 but it's like oh but don't you dare use this ableist slur hey listen kudos to lizzo and beyonce Kudos to Lizzo and Beyonce for saying, hey, I'll remove it. I'll be courteous. Kudos to them. Because I'm going I'm to I'm keep it a buck with you. It, or, or all the other countries, you know what I'm saying? All the other places and continents of the world, it, you know, France and this and that and the third, all the other countries about to come over here and pounce on Americans for their vernacular while they continue to, 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 to say and do what they want to do, regardless of how much we inform and educate them about how offensive their terminologies can be, stop calling cigarettes that. No? Nobody want to say nothing about that? Okay. 
I want to know from y'all in the chat. Let me know. Drop a one in the chat if you feel like Beyonce should have changed the lyric. And if you feel like it's offensive, just don't use it. Drop a one in the chat if you feel like it's offensive. Don't use that word. And Beyonce should have changed it. And Lizzo. Drop a two in the chat if you feel like that's just crazy for the UK to be policing American language. I want to know what y'all think. Someone says, what slur did Beyonce take out? She took out the word spaz. That's the word that she took out. And matter of fact, I can bring up the direct quote. This is something that was going all around today where her publication announced that um, it was it was ableism, right? So... You know, there's, she says the word spaz on the Renaissance album twice and one song that was co-written by Drake. I see a lot of twos in the chat. A lot of twos. A lot of twos. Two, 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 two. I, I just, I, um, Cash VKNY says, listen, sometimes you might just have to spend all the UK needs to sweep their own doorsteps, worry about their transgressions of the royal family. Oh, oh, but yeah, this, this this is what everyone was talking about today. Beyonce, that, that's just a lot of press. A lot of press that's not so positive as it pertains to Beyonce's album. Um, but yeah, I think she's handling it well, as always. Here's what we're going to do, because this cat is trying to get out the room. What I'm going to do, let me hit this commercial. Drop some pancakes down below. Drop some black cat emojis down below. We're going to set Leo free. I'm going to give him the other half of his payment in a second. And we're going to be right back with the rest of this Beyonce dudes and the rest of our black news lineup. Thank y'all for hitting thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already hit that button. We'll be right back. So let's see if you really bout about it. If you've been serious about what you've been saying about wanting to support more black owned businesses, here's your chance. I found a spot for us to grab our hats, hoodies, affordable electronics, phone accessories, and gadgets from. It's over on edwerso.com. That's E-D-W-E-R-S-O-W.com. Grab something for your hubby, your wife. Hey, I ain't encouraging that side chick behavior, but it's just in time for the holidays. So head on over there and grab your AirPod cases, hoodies, and affordable electronics. That's edwerso.com, E-D-W-E-R-S-O-W.com. And I'll see you over there. It's time to face it, boo. Your product needs more exposure. If you want to see your ad here on my channel, be sure to shoot an email over to yt.theplainestjane at gmail.com and let's chat. But if you're new in my neighborhood here on YouTube, hey, I'm The Plainest Jane and I provide coverage and commentary on trending stories, viral events, and black culture. I definitely, definitely appreciate you stopping through and hitting that subscribe button if you'd like more of my particular brand of syrup. All right, so we had some people say two, but I see why she, I see that I know she makes a lot of money in the UK. Okay, Candace Lane says, I understand why she makes a lot of money in the UK. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Um, So let's get into it because I go to let the cat out. He didn't even want to leave out the room. Okay, I guess he trying to stay here and get his money. He's like, you ain't docking my pay. Staying here for the whole thing. Okay. <laughs> Happy Tuesday to y'all. Let's get into the next topic. You know what? Let's go ahead and get straight into the Nicki Minaj situation. And then I want to talk about all these different epidemics with all these different things and vaccines or whatever it is they want us to get and worry about, right? Okay, so we all know that, that do we all know? Do we really all know? There was this huge situation going on earlier today with Nicki Minaj and <laughs> Nicki Minaj and her assistant, okay? Apparently her assistant went on Instagram stories and was airing her out and all this other stuff. If you heard about that, let me know in the chat, but let, let's just go ahead and nip this in the bud. It's a fake narrative. It's a fake narrative. And, and it took me no more than two minutes of research. Leo, what are you doing? 
stop. You didn't want to leave, but you want to stay in here and be a menace. What's T? So let's get into just, just a couple of receipts, right? Because this, this is the page that it was coming from. All right. And I'm going to show you these things. Give y'all this, this, this quick breakdown because it really don't take much. We ain't got to sit here and spend 15, 20. We ain't even got to spend 10 minutes on it because it's very. Basically what they're saying, right? The, the the synopsis of this situation with Nicki Minaj and her alleged assistant that she fired was that um, she fired her. She went to the Instagram stories and said that Nicki Minaj owes the IRS $137, right, to the IRS. Then uh, additional information uh, uh, um, about leaking the Papa Bear, which is Nicki Minaj's only child, leaking Papa Bear's name to the press. It took me no time to figure out that this was a hoax. Let's take a look at these goddamn receipts because I just can't believe people are this gullible. Um, I really can't. It, it's pretty freaking crazy if you ask me, right? So you take a look here and you can see this is supposed to be Papa Bear, right? The insinuation that, hey, I'm leaking the baby's name. This is supposed to be the, the, the baby's names. Amadeus Cyril Pet Petty. Amadeus Cyril Petty, right? <sighs> Let's go ahead and take a moment to zoom in on this profile picture and the name, Okay. I don't even know, we is, is we really going to be able to zoom into it like that? How much can we zoom in? You can see this little picture, right? Now, this picture about blurry as I don't know what. But zoom into this picture. We can see what it is. Follow where we're going with this. Because this is literally a case of somebody taking somebody else's identity and pretending to do a whole bunch. Of, I know you're not chewing that cord. I know that's not what you're doing. Leo. Stop it. I'm going to spray you with this little water bottle. I'm going to spray you. Get, get away from that cord. God dang it. So we see this lady's picture, right? You can see the, the, the heavy blonde highlight on the one side. Let's get into this right here. Okay. You see this lady's picture? Now, mind you, the last picture said Kate Miller. This picture here we get into says her name is very same profile picture. Megan Feldman Bedencourt. She's a digital strategy and content director at a PR and marketing firm. So how is this possibly Kate Miller when her name is Megan? But also let me let me let me show you a little something else. Just 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 a little something else. Okay. This stolen goddamn identity. Here's her Twitter. Megan Bedencourt. Again, same profile picture. Same profile picture. So she is a, a, a huge PR person. People who are huge in PR, they do not have grammatical errors. Okay. They do not. $137 million to the IRS. Okay. <laughs> That's what it was. And um, like, come on, this is not Nicki Minaj's assistant. Like, why are we so dense? Why are we so dense? Like, why are we so much in a hurry without doing the, the bare minimum of research? This wasn't even anything extensive without realizing that, that th this is not who y'all are talking about. It's really not. So this whole thing about Nicki Minaj and her assistant and the assistant leaking the baby's name and Nicki Minaj allegedly owing $137 million to the IRS... Please stop. I'm not even a bar, but the, it, it's such a fake narrative. Um, and it's just too easy to debunk. 
it's too easy to debunk. Okay? How many of y'all saw people like literally running around with their heads cut off with this information today? I'm like looking at the, the, the regular blogs, right? The neighborhood talk and everything else. Everything they posted, here go everybody under there. Cardi gang, Barty gang, whatever. You know, oh, so you're not going to talk about Nikki? Oh, so you're not going to talk about Nikki assistant exposing her? There, There is, and this is before Nikki even went live to address it. Nikki went live to address it not too long ago. But I tweeted literally earlier today and again if you follow me on twitter you know you know my finger my, my finger is always on the pulse you hear me but i tweeted this hours ago i mean like literally at four o'clock in the afternoon it's 2 30 in the morning right now that this is a fake narrative i said the narrative that Nicki minaj fired her assistant is fake news i'm not even a barb but this is pretty obvious the fake assistant is apparently airing her out on Instagram and has leaked Papa Bear's name and revealed that Nicki Minaj owes $173 million to the IRS. Again, it's fake. I said, I'm debating adding this craziness to tonight's lineup. Had a couple of people said, sis, add it to the lineup because I need to know what's going on. I'm like, okay. It's pretty, it's pretty simple to me. <laughs> Hello? Hello, is anyone there? The lights are on, but no one's home, meaning you're dense, meaning your elevator doesn't go all the way to the top. If you really fell on this story and you believed it, because that's not even how Nikki's team and the people she works with roll. It, as a matter of fact, it goes against contract, but that's a whole nother story. All right. Ooh, Trofan Buggy said, we dragging Nicki Minaj for that monster she married. Ciao. Ciao. Fior says, people don't want to admit that mostly Barty gang are made up of young kids and they create and start a lot of ish and I'm sick of it. I think that's the truth. I do think that that is the truth. Okay. But that's the Nicki Minaj information to keep it simple. One thing I miss trying to get back here. Because Leo was acting up, was the additional Beyonce information that I had. Okay. And the additional Beyonce information I had was that the dream kind of got this white lady or non non black woman together, right? She's not a woman of color by any means. The dream got this woman together because, you know, the dream has a lot of writing credits on Beyonce's, you know, current album. The dream has low key like a lot of, uh, a lot of writing credits all over the place. Okay. And he got this woman together. So, but I don't even know who I Diane Warren is, right? I'll talk about how much I don't know who Diane Warren is in a second, but let's get into the dream and what he had to say to this woman. And apparently she's a musician and don't nobody know who she is. So apparently Diane thought that it would be a good idea to tweet how can there be 24 writers on a song, right? There's no other song with 24. <laughs> She's talking about Beyonce, right? There's no, there's no other song with that many writers out right now, right? So it's clear that she was talking about Beyonce. Word clearly got back to the dream and he got her together, okay? <laughs> got her together, so here go the dream. The dream says, by the way, I know it's not one-on-one -on -one writing contest you looking for from no one over here. <laughs> okay, let's start with the shade. I, by the way, I know it's not a one-on-one -on -one writing contest you looking for from no one over here, meaning that my pen is stronger than yours. Don't start with me, baby. The dream went forward to say, you don't want that smoke and you know I love you, but come on. Stop acting like your records haven't been sampled. He goes on to say, you mean how does our black culture have so many writers? Well, it started because we couldn't afford certain things starting out. So we started sampling and it became an art form, a major part of the black culture, hip hop in America. Had that era not happened, who knows? You good, sis? Oh, but he's not even done yet. He's not even done. And see, this, this, this is what happens. This is what happens. 
<laughs> because don't don't come over here asking about how black how black culture operates and then because here's the thing because she ends up playing victim in the end of it but you got to take a look at this emoji this emoji gives gives it gives irritation right it it didn't really give a pure sense of curiosity in my opinion how can there be 24 writers on, on a song and this is kind of like a an eye rolling emoji kind of like she's calling like saying you, you did too much to write it there's shade within that emoji there had she just put a thinking emoji in there that would have been left up for more neutral interpretation but that ain't what she did and so she called herself being passive aggressive and the dream came through ain't call out her name or anything but schooled her on it so let me tell you about black culture man okay here's the next one the dream says it's about art okay <laughs> oh you know what no let me read it from the bottom he says diane warren it's all good but don't do that it's young writers producers and artists that need to know whatever way they make it and however they contribute is worth it we all aren't as fortunate at first every idea is art it's more fun together in my opinion and i could be wrong it's all about art, not one artist or writer, me or them. With all due respect and love for those who came before and will come after, I'm truly sorry if I disturbed the force today. That's not my purpose. And so it's, it's um, yeah, and, it, you know, Diane did end up issuing an apology because she was like, hey, listen, I worked with, I work with Beyonce. I didn't mean any harm. She basically ended up saying, look, there's no there, there's no reason for you to be nasty or mean. And really, I think he just met her with the same type of energy that she was giving out, but she didn't expect it because she didn't put a name on it, but she was specific. What other song is coming out right now that she would say 24 writers? What, what other song? So let me see if I can find, hopefully she hasn't erased it because I saw it when she was still talking to him. <laughs> they ate her up so bad. Okay, it's still here. So let's take a look. Okay. So here she is saying, um, I didn't mean that as an attack or disrespect. I didn't know this. Thank you for making me aware of it. No need to be mean about it. And again, when she first came out with it, it's kind of like she's irritated. It, that's less like me saying, why does a certain person YouTube video or thumbnail or title, why it's got to be like that with a rolling eye emoji? That's clearly shade, right? So when somebody re responds back to you in a shady fashion, don't play victim now. Because it's not like he said, bitch, get out of here. Da, 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 da. All he said was, listen, let me school you real quick with, a, with, with a, a, a smooth three tweets, right? And here she go, you don't got to be mean about it. So, and here goes somebody. Now you want to play victim and say it wasn't meant as an attack when you were literally just bragging about writing your songs on your own and having 23 less writers. Come on, Diane. You're not about to white woman your way out of this one. Okay. So apparently she was tweeting more. So she's saying, oh, I write my own songs and I write with 23 less writers. You know what I mean? So her her throwing this sort of shade towards Beyonce, a culture, um, and, and, and the way that Beyonce and, and the Dream and whoever else had put their record together, and she was met with almost kind of the same energy, but she felt like she wasn't going to get it back. Hey, look, it is what it is. It, you know, when you are sampling songs, you do have to list those credits and, and put them on as writers as well. That's that's a part of the game. And that's part of what he said. <laughs> like, that's part of what he said. Like, your songs have been sampled too. Stop acting like you don't know. But if you don't know, let me tell you about Black culture and how scarce it was and why and how we sample. This is how and why we create the things that 
we sample, okay? That's just that, right? Um, so that's that with the dream, Beyonce, and all this other good stuff. The people ate her up so, so, so bad. Um, Leo, you about to get out. Okay. Um, but that's that. I honestly, okay, everything is sampled. Why didn't she just tend to her craft? Can somebody tell me a song that Diane has written? I see that several people in the chat who know about Diane Warren. Honestly, I went looking at the songs that she, you know, has has, you know, sang, wrote, whatever. I didn't really I didn't see anything that jumped off the page for me. That's just me, you know, but sometimes when unseasoned people um, try to throw shade towards us and they get a, a, a hefty answer with the same energy, you know, they, they, they feel some type of way. And it's like, chill, I, I, I didn't wild out on you. I just told you about yourself in a way that you didn't think I was capable of. You didn't think I was going to pick up on it. And th that's what be happening sometimes. They don't think you're going to pick up on the shade. And then when you give it back, they're appalled. Because they're like, how the hell did you pick up on me throwing shade at you? Well, well, <laughs> mm -hmm. all right. <laughs> now she not to, need to mind her but no I really do want to know a song are, are there songs because I saw some people saying Mariah Carey Stevie Wonder can somebody drop some songs in the chat that she's written can somebody let me know I'm not saying she's not an established artist but even established artists can throw shade and feel like they shouldn't get that shade back and she definitely says something shady to start this entire exchange. I don't feel like she said anything that was disrespectful to him. And I don't feel like he said anything that was disrespectful to her. I feel like it was just, there was some tension involved in the exchange, but the tension came from both ways. That's it. And just because you're well-established as an artist doesn't mean that when you throw shade, other people aren't, aren't able to throw it back at you. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Some said Whitney Houston, but again, what songs? Unbreak My Heart, Tony Braxton? Okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's that. Right? Because I mean, Mariah Carey is a very established artist. Although she's not a writer, she's a very established artist, but she's shady and people throw shade back at her sometimes. So um, that's that. So let's let let's move on. She didn't expect the clap back. Exactly. That that's the point that I'm making. I'm not trying to discredit her. I can be honest and say I might be a youngin and not know who she is because I don't. <laughs> like, but anyway, let's move on, child. Let's move on, child. Um. So it's it's. It's a lot. It's it's a lot. Right. She wasn't expecting a response. That's the whole point. And now she wants to play victim. I'm an established artist. Don't respond to me like that. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So here's the next thing. Okay. Love, love, love. The New York State Health Department is urging all New Yorkers, including kids, to get vaccinated against polio right away if they had not been already. Following the case in Rockland County, the polio virus was found in wastewater samples from early June. Okay. So I'm like, look, la, 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 la. Joe, shut us down. Shut us down. We got too much. We got too much that we worrying about. Polio, the pox of the monkeys. What else? Y'all, you know, we still talking about Carisha Rona. You know what I'm saying? Like, what is going on? Lock us down. Because the monkey pox, they look scary. 
They look scary. They look painful. They look like large blackheads. I just can't. It's giving bubonic plague. <laughs>
Like, what is going on? Am I, am I even live? I don't know. It seems like I am live, but why won't my camera hook up? I just don't understand why it won't hook up to my camera. It's only using my webcam, which doesn't have the right angle. My camera's on. Why is that setting? All of my settings, all my all of my settings are whacked. What am I gonna do? How many more topics did I have? The internet is back. Hmm. I don't understand why my microphone and my camera won't connect. Thank you, Fior, for rejoining. What'd you say? Okay. Let me see if that works. The plain is Jane. This is one of my favorite comments here. She says, I loves me some black. And she said, loves me some <laughs> black news. She says, is it just me? Or does anyone else get tired of seeing people that don't look like them delivering info about them day in and day out? So wait a minute, you ain't joined the channel yet so that you can access special perks over here with the plainest Jane? Hey, roll us on your wrist plain Jane. Ooh, watch this. Hey, I'm the plainest Jane. I'm a cultural commentator and informant, and I provide sticky coverage on trending stories, black news, black culture, and everyday topics with a sticky abstract perspective. <laughs> so get familiar with the perks. I've carefully curated all of these things and it's just a little exclusive glaze to amplify the way that you express yourself. <laughs> so get comfortable, get used to our official emoji over here that is the pancake stack because it's always sticky in Hollywood and in real life and especially when you spend the time over here with the plainest Jane. Like I said, I hope you enjoy the exclusive glaze that I've provided for you to amplify the way you express yourself, and I hope you enjoy the digital vibe. Hey, listen, I always want you to keep it sticky, but be sure to think critically and independently, regardless of what you hear from me or anybody else. But most importantly, I hope that you're feeling all right, and hopefully you've had some time to tackle some of your invisible problems. I know I got a couple of new subscribers, and I just want to say thank y'all. I really do appreciate you. And if you're not quite feeling all right, this channel right here, once you join, it's quite help you kick back and decompress always but it will also keep you in the know with what's happening with the best black news, celebrity entertainment, and a splash of controversy. So again, get comfortable. The first drink is on me, all right? Act like you got some sense, and I'll see you around. But don't forget to keep it sticky 24-7 by following me on Instagram, but hit that notification bell so that you always know when I upload and you get your mm -hmm. dose of syrup first. Now, with all that stickiness being said, the most important thing I want you to remember about this neck of the woods and the plainest Jane is Black Lives Matter. And if you don't agree, buy pumpkin, buy pumpkin. That will take you out. I don't play that shit. Now you gotta go for real. It's just that simple. <laughs> hey, look, whether you join or not, I do want you to stay beautiful, black, and blessed, and just know I appreciate your support. I'm your girl, the plainest Jane. And let's see what's happening in these virtual streets. You ready? All right now. <laughs> 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 
This will be a crazy ride. I'm warning you now. Damn, Diane came through. I'm talking shit about Diane and she came through and shut me down. What's tea? What's the syrup? Diane, it's not that serious. I'm just giving you some criticism. I'm just giving you some feedback. I'm giving my perspective and my commentary. I'm not taking away from your legend status. Ma'am, clearly you've written a lot of things. My chat is letting me know. It's just that just because you've written great things and you throw great, you know, you throw shade, doesn't mean you can't get shade thrown back at you. I don't see any difference between the passive aggression and what you said to, 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 to or about the dreams work and what the dreams said to you. Damn, Diane. Diane Warren came through these interwebs and what she did was she turned my, she flicked my power off and I didn't know what to do. And my webcam sitting up here trying to figure out what's going on. And you know what I find really funny? You know what I find really funny about that? One or two screen names I've never seen in my chat before. And matter of fact, I, I don't even see them right now. They popped out when the power went out. This one of them. I'm like, dang, the power come out and here, here, go, here go people that I ain't never seen before. But shout out to JB as always, the lady. I'm like, I ain't never seen you before. So the power went out. The power go out and people come out the bushes. Is that what go on? I got to turn the power out every now and then to get some people to come out the bush. So, God damn. What's going on? Shit. Dang, you guys. <laughs> what is going on? Let me hurry up and get off here because Diane coming through here upset that I'm um, providing some feedback, girl. Uh, Diane not having it, but child i'm just saying you asking black people questions about how and why they do things don't expect a black person to tell you how and why they do things that's all it was you asked the question pretty matter-of-factly about black culture and black people and the black people and the black culture answered you back very matter-of-factly shit <laughs> <laughs> Damn. All right, girl. I don't think it was the monkeypox. I think it was Diane. <laughs> Princess in the chat. Did y'all see that? I wish the camera hadn't I wish it hadn't slowed down because I saw the light starting to flicker out. I said, oh y'all thought y'all could see it. I'm gonna download this video when I'm done on the stream yard end, not the internet end. And see if it's there because I think y'all will find it funny, but nonetheless, because it was some scare. I was about to get about this chain run, okay? I really was. <laughs> I really was. <laughs> so let's let's continue. We got a couple more topics to get through. Not that many to be honest, but we do have a couple topics to get through. We talked about Wendy, we talked about I won't see the D woman's name no more because she already upset. We talked about polio, monkeypox, and what's Honestly, do y'all feel like it's time for a shutdown though? For real? Do you feel like we need to shut down this monkeypox is getting out of control? We got monkeypox. We got polio. Drop a one in the chat if you feel like shut us down, Joe. <laughs> My um my my um my music tech said you said shut us down, Joe, and he heard you. That's why you got shut down. I'm like, it wasn't Joe, it was Diane. No, drop a one in the chat if you think that between monkeypox and now polio. Because you remember when when the when the panorama first started, it was in New York. That's the spot that really is kind of like a, a 
it, its own case study, like test spot for if and when and how things are going to go. New York was the first spot to really declare a state of emergency and to really like take things a certain way before the rest of the country follows suit. So do y'all think it's time for another shutdown? One in the chat too. If you feel like, no, we don't need another shutdown, whatever the case is. And listen, you can still drop the one in the chat, even if you feel like the shutdown isn't going to happen. But some people feel like, look, the economy lost so much that the government's just not going to do it again. They just not <laughs> like, uh, and, and I don't blame them. I, I, I know that, we, you know, again, we live in a capitalist society. I say this all the time. Um, but, you know, monkeypox, polio, all that other stuff, it's too much going on. It's too much going on. And I'm, th this monkeypox is, I don't think it's, it's airborne, but it's like skin to skin contact or close proximity. Um, and that, 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 that monkeypox, it looks a little... Um, it looks beyond scary. How about that? That's the best way I can say it. It looks beyond scary. Beyond scary. <laughs> it really does. Somebody was saying polio. What they were saying, just because the princess said she tired of people. They said one slash two. I, you know, I, I'm like, look, they're declaring a state of emergency in New York when it comes to monkeypox and then they're urging all the, the New Yorkers, the kids to get vaccinated against polio. I, I just, I'm like, look, it's too much. Lock us up, Joe. Cause I'm scared. I'm scared of everything out here at this point. Y'all remember how scared we were of the panorama when it first started? Y'all remember when parents, when the kids was getting out of school the parents was literally uh, spraying kitchen cleaner, chloride, any any kitchen oven cleaner, bathroom cleaner spray they could find. They spraying their kids down with them sprays because they just, they just had no clue. We we didn't know how to handle that situation. All right, Princess said I thought we was already vaccinated for polio as babies. I look, it's so many different things. I I don't know what we would. Facts. Do y'all know what y'all was vaccinated for as babies? Because I don't know what I was. <laughs> I don't know what the hell I was vaccinated for when I was a baby. All I know is I'm supposed to be allergic to penicillin, but around about the time that I was born, the doctors were saying that all of the children were allergic to penicillin. So I, I don't know. All I know is I had a chicken pox once in kindergarten. I'm supposed to be allergic to penicillin. Other than that, baby, all I know is my blood type. I don't know what I was vaccinated for on that table. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> the panorama. <laughs> just, the panorama got started. We had no clue what to do. <laughs> we had no clue what to do. It's out of pocket. Okay, here goes some classic diseases. Measles, the mumps. Rubella? I never heard of rubella. Child, you learn something new every day. Nothing sounds as dangerous as the bubonic plague, but honestly, monkeypox looks like the bubonic plague, to be honest with you. I don't think that kids these days did. I don't know. Nah, for real. Do y'all know what y'all got tested for when y'all was a baby? Do y'all know what y'all got shots for when y'all was a baby? Drop one in the chat if you know everything you got shots for me. You was a baby. Drop a two if you have no clue and you're just like me. Are you just like me and you have no clue? <laughs> I don't know what I got. I don't know what shots my mother gave me. All I knew is I hated needles. And so that's why my mother was um, pretty shocked when she found out I had a tattoo. I was 18, but still. Um. <laughs> They can kiss my behind at this point. They just put diseases out there. It's true. Hello? Y'all saying y'all know what y'all was vaccinated for. Tell me what you was vaccinated for when you was a baby. Tell me what you was vaccinated for when you was between zero, one minute old and two. You tell me. Because I'm not sure I believe you ones out here. I'm not sure I believe y'all. not sure. 
I'm not sure I believe y'all. Nonetheless, I feel like, look, somebody said one and a half. I know some of them. Okay. I'm down with that. Okay. At me showed us the monkey pox. I'm not going to show y'all the monkey pox because honestly, it makes me itch and I don't want to do that to y'all. Um, so I just won't show it. But I know I've seen it and it looks nasty. It looks absolutely nasty. Some of y'all said Leo shut down the power. You know what? I wouldn't put it past me. Leo, did you do it? Did you shut down the power? You want a treat? You need to tell me in exchange for this treat. Did you shut down the power? Okay, um, give us a second. We're gonna get you your payment in a moment. Did you shut it down? Was it you? Because if it was you, you can get the hell out. This is too important for you to be shutting down. Um, All right, that's it. Get down. That's it. Thank you for showing the people what it's like. Can you get down? Can you should get down. So we can go to the next story. Leo, we got two stories in Black history to go through. Can you get down, please? Can you get down? Oh my goodness, you go. You know what, y'all? He's realized that I asked his. I I, I asked him so nicely on the live stream that now he's playing games. He's like, I ain't got to listen while you live because you're not really going to um, be mean to me while you live. And you damn right I'm not going to be mean while I'm live. Y'all like the Leo, get down. Get down. One day I'm going to put the ugly voice on you on these live streams and I'm going to embarrass you. Yeah, I'm going to embarrass you in front of your little friends. They your little friends that you like to show off for? I'm going to embarrass you one day soon. Get it together. <laughs> Not Leo said I in black history. I'm embarrassing it because y'all his little friends. Okay? <laughs> yeah, they show out. He realizes, he said, when she got that camera rolling, she don't really be put, cracking the whip. Okay, I'm going to show you. What, how, how our parents used to say back in the day, I can show you better than I can tell you. <laughs> I'm going to show you. What what they say? A hard head make a soft day. <laughs> they say you got to have shots for kindergarten. That's true, but what shots were they? I remember getting shots for, you know, kindergarten and fifth grade, but what, 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 what were they, though? <laughs> I don't know what shots they were. <laughs> what were they? <laughs> Not all y'all here for the cat act. That's why he act up because y'all think it's so goddamn funny and he know y'all think it's funny. Keep it up here. Yeah, our parents used to say that. Keep it up here. Keep it up. You think it's cute? You think it's funny? Keep it up here. Keep it up. I'm going to show you. Keep it up here. No, I'm joking. Don't keep it up. 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 <laughs> All right. Let me move on, child. Me and this cat, we'll be going back and forth all day. We really talk. We have a whole relationship. That's why he react that way. Because we really do talk all day long. And he responds. He understands a lot. He understands a lot of English. But anyway. <laughs> Let's get on to talking about some Wendy Williams, okay? Is y'all right? Thanks for letting me keep you connected and in the know with what's happening in the black world. Don't forget to smash on that like button for support and for more black news. All right, let's talk about a little bit of Wendy Williams. All right. Um, Wendy Williams is still not okay. She's still not okay. We will be a fool to think. <laughs> Whooping cough. Um, we'd be a fool to think that we're really going to get a podcast. This is where at, at first when Funky Deneva was saying that, shout out to Funky Deneva, 
when he was first saying that, I didn't agree. And I, 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 I felt like he was being a little pessimistic. But as time goes on, honey, I just, um, I just, I don't, I just, I'm not sure if it's going to happen. She's not looking well, right? So I want to show you two different videos. A lot of us have seen the one from the day, but I'm going to start y'all off with the one from the weekend. Okay. Um, she's literally laying in the Louis Vuitton store on a, you know, display beds are very hard, like very, very, very hard. They're stiff. They're basically like cardboard boxes under there. They're like cardboard boxes. Here's Wendy Williams. Okay. This weekend, was this Saturday or Sunday? The 31st, today's the first. This was Sunday, all right? She's laid up. Everybody walking past in New York can see her sleep with them size 17 and a half Tims. Um, laid up, not okay. Not okay, okay? Wow. Just wow, Wendy. Over the weekend, why would she be sleep in public like this and not, you know, her own bed? So that's one thing, not to mention the clip that we seen today, which baby, baby. What's your ring? Ooh, oh it's so beautiful. It's so what you got to say for the camera? Uh, he's out buying, getting stuff. I'm waiting for him to come back. Right. Let's see it, Wendy. Let's see it. What you ring? Ooh, oh it's so beautiful. It's so what you got to say for the camera? Uh, he's out buying, getting stuff. I'm waiting for him to come back. Right. Let's see it, Wendy. Let's see it. What you ring? Ooh, oh it's so beautiful. It's so what you got to say for the camera? Uh, he's out buying, getting stuff. I'm waiting for him to come back. Right. Let's see it, oh Wendy. Man. Let's see it. What you ring? Ooh, oh it's so beautiful. It's so what you got to say for the camera? Uh, he's out buying, getting stuff. I'm waiting for him to come back. All right, all right, all right. So, Wendy's not okay. Um, I think that the podcast would be, I would, I would honestly, I would rather her not come out with it. I really would. I would hate for her to embarrass herself um, and come out with some incoherent mess which is all that we've seen from Wendy over the past couple weeks. The only coherent clips or moments we've gotten from Wendy have been clips like when she was sitting in the Louis Vuitton store and she was sitting up right. The clip was six seconds long. It's easy to look coherent for six seconds and smile and have your wig laid and she had her makeup done. Anything longer than 10, 15 seconds, it exposes how unwell she is. Between her being asleep at the Louis Vuitton store on Sunday and then today, this clip comes out. <sighs> Maybe... They are exploiting her. They are exploiting her. You know, she showed her foot at TMZ and everything else. <sighs> There's honestly no room for me to even laugh here. It's really not. Um, It sucks that she's being exploited this way. And at this point, I just want Tyra Banks to cuss her handlers out 
this new guy that is supposed to be managing her right now. He can go to hell, but also I want Tyra Banks to tell him a little son. But you're not Stop it! I have never in my life yelled at a girl like this. When my mother yells at this, it's because she loves me. I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. How dare you learn something from this? You go to bed at night, you lay there, you take responsibility for yourself. That's a bit much. That's a bit much. They sh Not to say they shouldn't have left her in the car. Like they got to treat her like she's a newborn baby. And she's like not allowed to be in the car by herself for like 10 minutes. But the driver of the car, who let her roll the window down? And that does sound like I'm talking about a baby. Who let her roll the window down? But I mean, whatever it takes to preserve the rest of her image. It's not like she's a random old lady with dementia, just kind of like losing touch, losing her grip with reality. Excuse me. This is somebody who has a whole legacy, a whole reputation, a whole empire to, um, you know, maintain the, 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 her public reputation that is connected to all of these things. And it really hurts my heart to have to see her go out this way. It <clears throat> reminds me of Lucille Ball a little bit. Although Lucille Ball wasn't ill, she just didn't know when to stop and she exploited herself willingly. Um, Lucille Ball has so much success, but she didn't want to let go of her character. I feel like there was a point where Wendy didn't want to let go of her purple chair and um, when things were on a decline. But you know what? I think that that's a conversation for another video for me to compare Lucille Ball and Wendy Williams, right? To get back to the task at hand, this is really sad. This is really sad. Um, it hurts my feelings. I, I I included this link in today's lineup, and I had I listened to the video like half like like once, and I'm like, oh my goodness, let me include this because she's not well. But as I sat here and I listened to it three times on repeat, it's like, damn. Um, Miss Lisa W M S fifty five. Thank you so much for the four ninety nine super chat. I do greatly appreciate it. But yeah, this is sad. Some people say the decline seems really fast. Her son is too young. Um, you know, you got her brother doing all other types of stuff. I just... Mm. Rashida said, oh, please compare it. You know, I, I will. I just don't want to convolute this video um, with it. But I will talk about it in another video because I do see some similarities. Uh, when it comes to bowing out gracefully from your... Um, your area expertise, your hobby, wh wh whatever it is, and feeling like you gotta hold on to it, you you kind of diminish it to uh, to to a large extent. But I'll save that for another video, right? Because I think it's a really good. I think about it all the time, and I study Lucille Ball quite frequently. All right. So let's get into the next subject, right? This is the last subject. Then we're going to get into the Black History moment. Then we're going to be out of here. Because, child, it's late, as a matter of fact. It's late. So, look, do you all remember? Do you all remember the... It was pretty much over the weekend. A Dillard's employee called a little boy, right? 10, 11-year-old boy called him a nigga. And the father, and this is a video in a situation that went viral, and the father gave him a really stern talking to. Instead of putting the paws on him and whatever, the father gave him, and this is part of the, the part of the video where I want to talk about black child mistreatment, the epidemic. It does feel like there is an epidemic of mistreating and intentionally neglecting black children, right? And then I'm going to get into these parks. Because I got two different video clips I'm going to show you from two different places, right? One is from Chuck E. Cheese and one is from Legoland. But the black kid was called a nigger at Dillard's. The Dillard's employee tried to say that, oh, um, I called your son a nigger because, um, because I hit my foot or I dropped something on my foot or something like that. And I'm like, that's your excuse? 
for being a trash human and calling a child that you felt like wasn't going to run back and tell their parent what you called them, that's your excuse? Okay, an, an, an epidemic, right? Now, that employee was fired, thank goodness. However, one thing about me, hey, Poison Ivy, one thing about me is I'm never going to clock someone's, I mean, unless it's coonish, right? I'm never going to clock um, or or rip to shreds, should I say, someone's response to racism and oppression, right? Like it's a form of PTSD. We all deal with it in different ways. Um, me, to be honest, when I see a lot of these crazy Karen videos, when these crazy Karens are saying the N word and calling us all types of things, hood book, whatever the, whatever the hell they call us, right? I laugh that because that's my coping mechanism because I spend a lot of time on social media and I, me, me myself, because again, we all have different ways that we cope with racism and oppression as black people. I can't let myself get so worked up at everything I see online. After all, I'm not experiencing it. I'm just watching it. And that's how I maintain my self-care. Could you imagine somebody who literally takes in every viral, racial, uh, you know, situation they encounter? And they take that in and become enraged and just boil. For me, I can't do that. And I find it easier to laugh at crazy ass nine ass Karens and, and, and how threatened they are by us. And that's how I handle virtual situations where I have to witness it quite frequently because I work online. You know what I mean? Like my job as a YouTuber and as a commentator is to sift through viral topics and what's going on and to seek out information online to figure out what topics I want to talk to you all about. And so I can't be in a constant state of rage to that capacity. In person is something different. I'm walking past a woman that literally calls me that or a man that, that calls me that. My reaction is not going to be the same as me looking at it online. However, I say all this to say that how we handle it is different. And I know some people felt like, oh, he's a sucker. He should have beat up the employee. The employee called his son, you know what I mean? The N word, you know, he shouldn't have done that kumbaya shit. He should have put the paws on him. I'm like, think about it. He put the paws on him and then what? His son, the, 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 the trauma from his son, not only being called that, watching his dad be arrested because we know that that's what's going to happen. And can he get out of jail? Can he not? How, how long until he gets out of jail and all that other stuff? You know, people would look, I feel like we all deserve the room and the grace to deal with racism and, and, and racial slurs face to face in our own unique ways. You know, like that's, that's just how I feel about it. And I had a homeboy about it earlier today. And I'm like, he gave him a stern talking to, but he still sounded like he had a lot of authority. His point got across. And then my homeboy was like, he should sue. And I'm like, yeah, he should. And maybe he will, but there would have been no room to sue had he laid the paws on him and just got buck. It is offensive. It is like someone's like verbally punching you in the face when they call you that. You out in public and some white person calls you a nigga? What? Add in, factor in the hard ER, factor in their tone, factor in their demeanor. Yeah, you, you want to fight, but is that what's best for you? Not to mention the people that live down in the South, sundown towns, all that other stuff. So, you know, I feel like everybody has the right to deal with it. You know, and, and I feel like some situations do call for people to get the paws put on them. You try to get in my face and say it over and over and like... I feel like everybody has the right to deal with it in their own individual way. I can't tell one black person how to handle being called that versus another. That's it's like trying to wild out in front of the police while your kids there. 
when you know, and, and it's not even wilding out. It's a matter of standing up for yourself. When and other, a lot of us, we become docile when we're around police because we just don't, especially if we're around our kids. So, you know, to wrap all that up, I say, look, I commend the dad. I'm not upset that he didn't throw a pause. I know there were some people who were upset that the dad didn't just fight. And he didn't just throw paws. And I'm like, everybody has a different conflict resolution mechanism. And it works different. And who am I to judge you for how you did it? That man understood the principle. It's not like he lost the principle. It's not like he said, yo, you get a pass to call me nigga. I'm going to be a coon. I'm going to be your token nigga. And actually, it's funny that you call me a nigga. It's not like he, like, that's, that's something that I would make a whole video about. But he still had the principle at his core. And his conflict resolution was um, different. It was a level of self-control that a lot of us don't <laughs> wouldn't be able to have. Because I would have gotten loud. I, I would have gotten loud and I would have recorded it. Um, not to mention, depending on what day it is and how I'm feeling, if I would have put hands on, you know? So I think that everyone's different. You know, trauma on top of trauma. Yeah, that's how I feel. And when you're in front of your kids, you know, the self-control that kicks in and, and and the restraint, that's 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 the better word. The restraint that you are able to latch on to when you are around your kids. Um, I I can feel it. I understand it. Um, yeah, every white person that calls a black person a nigga, especially to their face, they deserve to have their ass beat. Oh, yes, I do feel like they do. However the circumstances that follow that aren't in the best interest of us who are laying our hands on somebody. So I get that. You know what I mean? So shout out to that dad. Cause I felt like he handled it in a really calm, um, dare I say creative way. Uh, and, and, and that's just a level of self, control and restraint that is um you can't find in a lot of people you just can't someone said Dillard's made a statement the employee yeah the, the employee has been terminated right but i dare i say the, the the employee may not have been terminated had the dad just thrown hands they would have been like oh you were in a fight with a violent person let's just go ahead and let you have all for the rest of the week see you next week See you in two weeks. Because they would have been like, okay, you were dealing with a violent, aggressive person, right? So it's different. When you, yeah, there's so many different variables. Are you outside? Are you inside? Are you talking to an employee or somebody, some random person in a parking lot? There's so many different variables that go into that. There's so many different variables that go into that, okay? And then, because again, this is a topic about black child mistreatment the epidemic it there does seem to be an epidemic and the mistreatment of black children so i want to get into these character-based theme parks that are geared towards uh, children where the only hope and wish for the children is to engage with their favorite character if they're in close proximity and to be frank right <laughs> That is quite literally the main and only job that you have when you're underneath these costumes playing these characters. That's the only job that you have. What 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 what, what is your other job if, if your job is not to engage with the children at the park that you work for? Somebody let me know. Here's Chuck E. Cheese, okay? On July 30th at Chuck E. Cheese in Wayne, New, Wayne, New Jersey, my two-year-old was racially discriminated against. As you can see, he gives all the white kids high fives and purposely ignores my black baby. And when confronted, he ignored me as well. The manager made excuses for him. The manager's name is Angie Velasquez. Let's take a look. Oh, it's just loud for no reason. Oh, let me turn that down. She's so happy to be here. Let me just say, they should have never changed the rat. Not to mention, who the hell wants to go to a restaurant with a rat as the, a rodent as the damn mascot anyway? And don't get me wrong. Like, I had some birthday parties at Chuck E. Cheese. The rat used to look different. Chuck E. used to look different. They made them. 
you know, but at the very least, if you're going to be a rat, just say hi to everybody. I mean, for God's sakes, you're a rat. Like, who are you to be discriminating against people when you're a rat? I'm just saying. I don't know. I don't know. Let me, let, let's, let's, let's roll the clip. Now, for those of you who don't know, when you celebrate your birthday, the only kid in front of her, and she wanted a high five. Thank you, thank you. It's great to be here with you to celebrate these amazing birthday stars. Now, for look, those of you who she's don't reaching know, up for a high five. Your birthday at Chuck e. Cheese's, you are the star of the In fact, on the crazy. Thank you, thank you. It's great to be here with you to celebrate these amazing birthday stars. Now, for those of you who don't know, when you celebrate your birthday at Chuck Cheese, you put a hand up for a high five. In fact, on the that's so sad. The baby don't even know what's going on. She still kept a good attitude afterwards because she doesn't know what's going on. Um, but it's really unfortunate. And it's literally, it's it's sick that it, it it's a new trend to mistreat um, black children as they're trying to enjoy themselves. Okay? <laughs> Y'all don't judge me. I had a party at Chuck E. Cheese as a teenager. Girl, get out. You need to get out of here, girl. You need you need to get on. Why are you Show screaming? Me? You better get on. Better get on. Better get on. Girl, what was you having a party at um, Chuck E. Cheese as a teenager for? You gotta be ashamed of yourself, nigga. Real talk. You gotta be ashamed of yourself. All as you is. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. I ain't never going to stop clowning you for that one, girl. <laughs> but no, honestly, th this is a new sick trend. It also happened in um, in Legoland. I want to get into this situation, right, with Legoland. It says, my little brother and cousin were being completely ignored by a cast member at Legoland New York, as you can see. That man clearly skipped right past them and continued to move to the next kid. They were clearly discriminated against. And to say I'm angry is an understatement. Let's watch this 32 second clip. Girl, uh uh, this advertisement, please get out my face. Where the volume? Y'all, because y'all out of pocket. Way out of pocket. Girl. Dang. Why he walk around her like that? Let's look from the beginning again. Hold on. Dang. Is that what this offer? Go, go, go. You know, it never gets old. Um, these types of videos, I'll just leave it there, right? Because we could go on and on for days and days and forever watching videos like this and paying attention to things. And some people will say, "Oh, they weren't discriminating. You're 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 looking too deep at this, or that's not what that was." But Legoland, Chuck E. Cheese, whatever the case is, love. Love. There is a legitimate trend in an unfortunate epidemic of Black children being mistreated. Yeah, I saw one about Disneyland as well. And it's really unfortunate. It really, really, really is. Um, and it sucks. What are we going to do? 
what are we going to do? Outside of the lawsuits, and I'm not against that. You know what I'm saying? 25, what are they, $25 billion that they trying to sue for at, um, at Sesame Place? Hey, we live in a capitalist society. If other people, you got other nationalities and origins and creeds of people, they come over here and just based off of they, you know, their their um their race or where they come from, they get grants, ten thousand dollar grants to start a business. You get a grant, you get a grant, everybody gets a grant. You know, when do black people really get to benefit from the parameters and the things that are set up within the government to disperse funds? When? How often? Not as often as it should, and damn sure not as often as other people who came here after us. I said what I said. I said what I said. So I say, Sufa, you know, you got to ask for the boast. It's not that they're going to get $25 million, right? It's just that um, you're going to get less. So you got to ask for the maximum. And I'm all with it, right? They're talking about trauma and, oh, the babies need counseling. And is that a stretch? get your money. Okay. Whatever you can get, however far you can get with this suit, get it because we need to send a loud and clear message that discrimination, you will end up have to come out of your pocket and pay. Same thing with that Tulsa employee who, um, ended up suing Elon Musk and, um, ended up winning, but not accepting and wants to do it again. And that's a whole nother thing, but look, look, get your money. However much you can get, even if it's only three million, right? And you asking for twenty five, get your money, okay? Get your money. Shoot for the sky. You might get the stars. It is what it is, okay? That's that's just that. <laughs> like, you know, will the baby need a need? Who are you to say the baby don't have trauma? Who are you to rule that out? But to say the baby won't need extensive counsel counseling to work those things out. Nobody. You ain't nobody. Stop playing these games. Okay? Stop playing these games. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and get into the next thing. All right? We're going to get into our Black History moment, and then we're going to get out of here. Okay? We're going to get out of here because we got to get out of here. It's 3.38 in the morning, basically 4 o'clock in the morning. I got to go to work, right? Let's get into a quick commercial, Black History, and then we're done, okay? So let's see if you really bout about it. If you've been serious about what you've been saying about wanting to support more Black-owned businesses, here's your chance. I found a spot for us to grab our hats, hoodies, affordable electronics, phone accessories, and gadgets from. It's over on edwardsow.com. That's E-D-W-E-R-S-O-W.com. Grab something for your hubby, your wife. Hey, I ain't encouraging that side chick behavior, but it's just in time for the holidays. So head on over there and grab your AirPod cases, hoodies, and affordable electronics. That's edwardsow.com, E-D-W-E-R-S-O-W.com. And I'll see you over there. It's time to face it, boo. Your product needs more exposure. If you want to see your ad here on my channel, be sure to shoot an email over to yt.theplainestjane at gmail.com and let's chat. But if you're new in my neighborhood here on YouTube, hey, I'm The Plainest Jane and I provide coverage and commentary on trending stories, viral events, and black culture. I definitely, definitely appreciate you stopping through and hitting that subscribe button if you'd like more of my particular brand of syrup. All right, and we're back. The cat is here to get on my nerves per usual. And that's okay. Let's get into the next subject so that we can go ahead and um, <laughs> park this bus. The schools and communities. Yeah. I really hope she doesn't have much trauma. That's all. People are sick. I'm angry too. I agree. Or not you using the word spaz because you know that's a slur in the UK. Just Jay. I'm telling. But no, let's get into the Black History moment. We're going to talk about on this day in Black History because you know Black History is so much more than a month. I just I, I just can't stand the people that come out of the woodworks on February of every year because they're ready to... It's, it's Black History. They don't care about Black History any other day of the year 
but in February. And for me, it's a daily focus. All right. Let's get into the Black History moment so we can wrap this bus ride up. Okay. Now let's spend a little bit of time with our ancestors or at least listening to them. Because you know they always tell us you don't know where you're going unless you know where you came from. So let's get into a little bit of black history with this black history moment. All right, so let's get into it. Y'all already see what it is. We're talking about this beautiful woman right here on the screen. And this bit of Black history is about slavery, abolition, and other places which inspired and encouraged the abolition of our oppression in other places. So truthfully, okay, um, Actually, this is about many women who came before Rosa Parks, should I say. So let's get into this piece of Black history. Um, this was 1952, and this was way before Rosa Parks. Not way before, but a couple of years before Rosa Parks. Her name is Sarah Keyes, and she was just 22 years old. And on August 1st, this day in Black history, Sarah Keyes Evans refused to give up her seat on a state-to-state -state charter bus prompting the landmark court case, Sarah Keyes versus the Carolina Coach Company, in which... The Interstate Commerce Commission outlawed the segregation of Black passengers in buses traveling across state lines. So eligible for leave, Women's Army Corps Private, Sarah Keys, all right? She was excited about going home from Fort Dix to North Carolina to see her family. Now, when August 4th to 5th, August 1st of 52, Miss Evans boarded a bus in Trenton, New Jersey, because the bus traveled straight through, she had no changes to make. She knew she had the right to sit where she pleased. So she chose a seat in the middle of the bus as the back of the bus tended to be a hotter and bumpier ride than the forward section. So in addition, unpleasant smells from the engine frequently drifted to the rear windows. So she wanted to sit in the middle. So near midnight, the bus reached um, Roanoke Rapids, North Carolina, where a new driver was to take over. As was the custom, the new driver went through the bus and rechecked tickets. When he came to Miss Sarah Keys, he told her to move to the back of the bus. A white Marine boarded the bus and Miss Evans was told to give him her seat. So Miss Sarah was groggy from sleep, but she knew her rights and she refused to give up her seat. And again, she came before Rosa Parks. So the driver proceeded down the aisle. That wasn't the end of the issue. The driver returned to the front of the bus, announced that all the passengers were moving to a different bus with one exception. The woman who refused to give up her seat was to stay on the bus as she wanted, right? Because she would not be continuing on the route. Now, moments later, two policemen came to the terminal. Each one took Sarah by an arm and they took her to a patrol car for a ride to the police station. And when she asked to call her family, she was told that they would make the phone call for her. When she arrived home, her parents were frantic. They didn't know what had happened to her. She realized the police never called her parents. Again, she was 22 years old when this happened. So her case was brought before the Interstate Commerce Commission with Dovey Johnson Roundtree as her lawyer. And it wasn't settled until 1955, although this transpired in 1952. So again, in this famous court case, Sarah Keys versus the Carolina Coach Company, the ICC favored in... Miss Keys Evans ruling the Interstate Commerce Act forbids 
segregation. And here's what was said. We conclude that the assignment of seats on interstate buses so designated as to imply the inherent inferiority and inferiority of a traveler solely because of race or color must be regarded as subjecting the traveler to unjust discrimination and undue and unreasonable prejudice and disadvantage. We find that the practice of the defendant requiring that Negro interstate passengers occupy space or seats in specified portions of its buses subjects the passengers to unjust discrimination and undue and unreasonable prejudice and disadvantage in violation of Section 216D of the Interstate Commerce Act and is therefore unlawful. Here's the thing. Again, she came before Rosa Parks. So Ms. Keys Evans' action preceded the Montgomery bus boycott. And though not the first civil rights movement figure to refuse to give up her seat, she helped lay the foundation for protests years to follow. Her story is seldom told, which is why Take a Seat, Make a Stand is such an important book, right? Author Amy Nathan self-published Take a Seat because commercial publishers told her that they already had a book on Rosa Parks or that Sarah Keyes Evans wasn't famous, so nobody was interested. So this book makes her story accessible for younger readers while not shying away from the brutality faced by African-Americans during this time. So there's a lot of other stuff in this book, but I thought that that was a really important piece of information to bring forward and to talk about because, and, and again, no one's trying to take anything away from Rosa Parks. Sure, uh, a lot of us, most of us still appreciate what Rosa did. However, she wasn't the only one. And we all know by now, she certainly wasn't the first one. So it's important to talk about the people who came behind her. Again, this was 1952. I believe Rosa Parks and her situation was 1955, if I'm not mistaken. And let me just verify that. Um, yeah. I'm exactly right. 1955, this woman's situation happened in 1952. So it was three years prior. And it's important to tell her story and let it continue on. Okay. She's not famous because they didn't mention it. Exactly. Exactly. Um, 57. Yeah. I mean, 1957, excuse me for not saying like 1957, if it's confusing. Um, the woman I just read about her situation was in 1955. Whereas so Rosa Parks, uh, I'm sorry, her situation, the woman I just talked about, her situation was in 1952. Rosa Parks was in 1955. Okay. So that's that situation. And there were plenty of people who came before Rosa Parks, although all of them are, you know, uh, very equally important, right? A lot of people would say. So let's get into the next piece of Black history. Leo, what's going on? What's going on? Can you... Um, yeah, because you got my headphones getting mixed up. Can you get down, please? Get down. All right. Let's get into the next piece of Black history. Um, the next piece of Black history is about slavery, abolition, and other places, which was inspired and encouraged by the abolition of our oppression in other places. And I thought this is really dope. This is a short piece, a lot shorter than the last one. So when we talk about on this day in black history, we're going back to 1834. This is when Britain passed the Slavery Abolition Act. Matter of fact, let me put something on the screen so that y'all can actually see one of these signs. What I'm about to put on the screen is actually a poster for an event that was in Worcester, I believe. Worcester, Massachusetts in 1849 to commemorate the end of slavery in the British West Indies. So that's what this poster is all about, right? But let's get into a little bit of information about it. On this day in Black history, August 1st, 1834, Britain passed the Slavery Abolition Act outlawing the owning, the buying, and the selling of humans as property throughout its colonies around the world. Now, while this did not free enslaved people in the United States, it was a source of inspiration and hope 
for abolitionists. It outlawed slavery in Canada, which became a haven for refugees. Black people, and we all know Harriet Tubman, right? So we, we know about Canada and going up there and all that other stuff. But Black people in the United States and white abolitionists observed August 1st day. This is what they called it, right? Because this was 1834 when Britain passed the Slavery Abolition Act. Black people in the United States and white abolitionists observed August 1st day widely up until the Civil War and the tradition carried on to a lesser extent now into the 20th century. So August 1st day was once the most important date on the calendar for African-Americans during the 19th century. And basically... It represented a day more meaningful than the 4th of July. It's, it's really interesting how history repeats itself, right? Because now this is the first year that Juneteenth has been recognized as a federal holiday. And a lot of us are like, listen, enjoy the 4th of July off. If you work for a place to give it, we're not saying give up your day off. because, But we're saying respect Juneteenth more than the 4th of July. I find that parallel in this passage of history and where we are right now, right? But to get back to this history, August 1st day was one of the most important dates on the calendar for African-Americans during the 19th century. It represented a day more meaningful than the 4th of July. It was also widely celebrated across the nation with picnics, speeches, dancing, hymns, marches, until the beginning of the Civil War. So the holiday marked the radical deed of a foreign country. Britain's passage of the Slavery Abolition Act, which marked the start of freedom for 800,000 enslaved people in all its colonies on August 1st, 1834. Okay. There was another girl Rosa Parks kept in her house. Oh, okay. So the holiday had its roots in Jamaica, where a five-week revolt led by a Black preacher named Sam Sharp in 1831 to 1832 had forced the British um, Parliament to make a calculated decision that maintaining slavery overseas was simply too expensive. So, quote, let us pray that our brothers and sisters in other lands may be made free, end quote, said the once enslaved William Gibson in Falmouth, Jamaica on August 1st, 1838. So, you know, the holiday had its roots in Jamaica where a five-week revolt led by a black preacher named Sam Sharp. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I read that already. So yeah, that's pretty much it, okay? So that is on this day in black history, all right? I wanted to get into those things because these things really touched me early when I was researching and reading at work. Um, and I, I, I just enjoy going back in time and figuring out like which, which, which strong minded black folk in history back in the day, do I really resonate with? Can I see myself in or see some similar traits or whatever the case is? Um, my favorite person to write about when I was growing up and I had to choose somebody to write about not that it was a chore. I had to choose somebody to write about growing up was Harriet Tubman. Some people like to choose MLK and Malcolm X. Harriet Tubman was my girl because she got down and dirty. You tell me who Malcolm X or who MLK killed in order to tell me who. Harriet was a G. If you got to kill your own brother and then as a kid to even understand as a kid in the in elementary school, I understood why Harriet had to kill her brother. I understood it perfectly. That's what made her my favorite. It's, I'm like, it's not that she was evil, that she was cruel, that she just wanted to kill her. It's like, well, there's a bigger cause out here. And if you two bitch made and if you're going to run back and tell Massa exactly what our routes are and what we're doing. You're going to ruin it for the freedom of the rest of these people. No. <laughs> Harriet Tubman was my, and, and still would be, if I had to write something right now to get a grant or whatever, Harriet Tubman would be the gal. 
the gal that I would write about. Okay. So that's on this day in black history. Drop a comment down below and let me know when you had to write about somebody in school for black history. If, if you ever had to like write black history papers or whatever, who did you write about? Like who was your go-to person? Um, Cause for me, it was definitely Harriet. Okay. <laughs> she killed her brother. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Harriet absolutely killed her brother. Um, he was, he was scared, you know, she's in the process of carrying all these people to freedom and her brother wanted to go back. Her brother was getting scared and there was so many different, um, tactics, torture tactics, um, uh, for them to, you know, beat the truth out of you to an extent. I mean, you had nipple twistings, you had lashings, you had, um, I mean, like you name it, right? I don't feel like getting too gruesome because I've been, shout out to Baltimore, right? If you haven't been to the Blacks and Wax Museum and you've been down to the lynch exhibit, you've seen, you know, all of the different things. So just to name a few, like the the slave masters, if, if, you, if you were too scared to continue going to freedom and you felt like I'm scared, we might get caught, I'm going to run back to Massa. If you run back to Massa, Massa already, Massa already know you Mm, Pastor and Master sound real similar. Okay. If you go back to Slave Master, right? They know you've been missing. They're going to ask you where you've been. They're going to ask you who's been trying to help. They're going to ask you what the route was. They're going to beat and torture the truth out of you, one way or another. And for Harriet, she couldn't afford that. She couldn't afford the chance of. The underground railroad, which really wasn't underground, for them to be torturing her exact route so that they could set up camp, put slave catches on the route, shut it down, whatever the case was. She couldn't afford those those you know the, those secrets to how she escaped and rescued all those people, whether it was her brother or a random person. It wasn't in the best interest of her and the freedom of the over a thousand people that she rescued. So yeah, she had to shoot her brother. Um, so yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, you didn't know that. I'm glad I could teach you something. This, this was a very valuable, uh, black history moment. If you didn't know that, that that's why she's always been, I was in a, in a fourth grade writing about, and I got it right. Imagine a child understanding. I, I get why she got to kill her brother. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> I understood it very well. She had a lot of big decisions to make. But look, that was today's moment in Black history. It's four o'clock in the morning. There are 155 of us right here. Okay. And I'm just, I'm, I'm grateful that 150 of y'all would be woke at four o'clock in the morning with me. <laughs> Watching this video, especially after my little technical difficulty, the power to flicked out and all that other stuff. That was so, so, so annoying. Yeah, her brother was too much of a liability. He had to go. He was scared, you know. Um, she had to do what she had to do. It's not that she wanted to watch her brother. It's not that she wanted to do that. But, you know, freeing all those people and herself... Yeah, a whole nother subject. I, I would love to really get into that mind frame and really talk more in depth about that, but it's late. Look, thank y'all so much for being here. I'm so sorry I couldn't give y'all a sticky note in this show. I do have a sticky note to give y'all, but it's late and I really got to go because I, I literally have to be up for work in like four hours, like for real. And I still got to go downstairs and eat because you know I didn't eat in between the two streams I did because if I get the itis, then I'm not going to come live and give y'all a video. So I got to eat. Which ain't even cool because I'm going to eat and go right to sleep, which means all the calories are going to sit. But nonetheless, look, thank y'all for watching. Thank y'all for checking the community tab. Thank you so much for subscribing to the backup if you haven't already. At TPJ Network, you'll see the third link down below in the description box. Don't forget to do something to relax and pour into yourself today. Happy Tuesday to you. And listen, if you haven't already taken that moment to subscribe, make sure you do so. It don't cost you anything to subscribe, right? Make sure you thumbs up or down. Either way, I appreciate it. But be sure to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any 
of this celebrity or trend and syrup because you know things are always sticky in Hollywood and in real life, drop one of them pancake emojis down below. Did y'all notice I changed my hair in between videos? Did y'all notice that? Because I did. <laughs> my hair in the last video, it just like was not cooperating. Okay. But nonetheless, let me catch some of y'all. Good night, good night, good night, good night. I work in the morning too. Give Leo, give Leo a snack. Here, Leo, you want more treat? This is the last one for the night. This is the last one for the night. The people, all right, give me a second to um, get it out the thing. Damn, y'all, he, y'all would think he never had nothing to eat before. Leo, I haven't even taken it out the thing yet. If you could get down and let me have my hand, thank you. Wait, 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 wait. I haven't, because I haven't, I haven't gotten it out yet. All right, if you want this one, you're going to have to go up front to the people so that they can see. You got it. It's, it's up here. Look, you see? I, well, I, I, you can't just pick at my hand and get it. You have to come. Oh, my. <laughs> he said, yeet. <laughs> Did y'all see him just snatched? <laughs> I know he did not just yeet that tree out my hand like that. Oh my God. <laughs> y'all. Y'all. <laughs> Excuse, I, but you know what? I can't believe he did that. This is a sick Negro. <laughs> I cannot believe he just did that. And look, look at him back from my doesn't. I don't got nothing else for you, man. I don't got nothing, nothing else for you. You just jip me. Part of you taking the treat is so people can see you enjoy it because they like that. And you took that. I'm docking your pay. Next show, you're getting a little less. <laughs> Next, no, no, uh-uh. Leo, get down. Get down. It's not a thank you because it's not a question. Goodbye, good riddance, and all of that stuff. Because there was no reason he should have did me like that. He did us all dirty. <laughs> what? I can't. Goodbye, y'all. I, I can't. He just, I'm going to go eat my crab cake and I'm going to be it. I'm eating my crab cake and I'm going to be it. He tried it. It's too much. It's, it's giving Harriet up and it's, it's giving we ain't got time for this. It's time to survive. Bye. Bye. Bye, y'all. I'm going to see y'all tomorrow. But that's it. If you want to catch more of my commentary on black culture or vital and trending information, be sure to subscribe by hitting that little circle in the middle of the screen, or I'll catch you in one of these rectangles to the right in another video. I'll see you there.